Good afternoon, good morning. This is Mark Johnson from Loyalty 360. Hope everyone's happy, safe, and well. I want to welcome you back to another episode of our Leaders in Customer Loyalty series. In this series, we have the privilege of speaking with the uh, brands who are on the front lines of customer channel and brand loyalty. Today, we have the pleasure of speaking with Tom Carr, who's the Chief Marketing Officer for Chicken Salad Chick, uh, which has grown to more than 185 restaurants in 17 states. They're in Cincinnati. We have one very close and uh, go there quite often and uh, great growth over the last few years. So Tom, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. Absolutely. And I didn't know you were going to the one in Cincinnati. Which one? Uh, the one on Beachmont. Okay, fantastic, yep. Yeah, I, I, I should have a lot of loyalty points. Uh, <laughs> actually, one of uh, my old uh, uh, girl soccer coaches is a manager there now. So she, uh, uh, so we go in there every once in a while to see her. And we love the cookies, uh, so we uh, big fan of the. Did you do your kids or do they did they go to Anderson? Uh, they go to uh, they go to Turpin. Okay, all right. Yep. Are, are you from the area? No, but I, just because we have restaurants there, I know it. Um, yeah, so it, it's Anderson's close. really close by. We've had a great. I mean, it's a great school. Um, that y'all have a good. Uh, Turpin has a good soccer program. Anderson has a great soccer program. So they, um, yeah. a little bit familiar with that at the high school sports because we participate in the community a lot. Yeah, that's good. Great. Yeah. So uh, good, good to hear. You should probably support Turpin, not much Anderson. I'm just thinking it's me. I don't know. Um, uh, both of my uh, girls play uh, varsity soccer and they've played since the freshman year. So fantastic. Yeah. But uh, they have a little better program. They have a little better coach. Is this live? Yeah, everyone's kidding. It's fine. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, we'd love to hear a little bit uh, about what you guys are doing at Chicken Salad Chick. And also, you know, we'd love to have a fun fact about you, something you like to do, you have a passion for, maybe uh, Auburn sports. Uh, you know, we'd love to get to people and know what the people we speak with a little bit more. So absolutely. Let's see. Uh, a, a fun fact, um, not Auburn sports necessarily. Um, I know our uh, Chicken Salad Chick started in Auburn. Um, I live in Atlanta. Um, I am not. Uh, I did not go to Auburn. Um, okay. I live in Georgia, so I'd say I'm more of a Georgia fan. Um, okay. I did go to college. That was a Tiger, but I, I totally different side of the world. Uh, I went to Princeton. So okay. Princeton Tigers are my Tigers. Um, fun fact is, you know, so this is my first, uh, as CMO, first experience in, in running marketing for a restaurant business uh, in this category. Um, and I actually joined Chicken Salad Chick. Um, have been working in, in brand marketing and advertising in a lot of different categories. Um, most recently, before I was in, the, I worked in the television business. Um, ran marketing for a couple of networks at part of Discovery. Okay. Um, launched a network and spent a lot of time in the TLC network. So I was on speed dial with Honey Boo Boo and her mom for a while. So there you go. There's the one fact. Uh, I know the name. I think I've seen pictures of her, but. Uh... I don't watch a whole lot of TV, but uh, yeah, that's good. That's amazing. You launched a network and uh, that's a great uh, segue into you know, doing what you're doing with uh, a chicken salad chick. And on that note, what do you find that uh, you learn from media and how is that applicable to what you're doing now in, in kind of in being the chief marketing officer for a, a rapidly growing uh, you know, restaurant chain? You know, I think there are quite a, quite a few things. Um, you know, one, one thing in, in that is no matter what business in you're, you're in and in the media business and the entertainment business, you really are fo focused on cultivating fans and, and listening to fans. So when you're developing programming um, or marketing programming, it's not that different. And so are you, um, you're, you're constantly looking at those fans and those people who are um, fans of a program or fan, fans of your brand, fans of your restaurant. Um, how are you engaging them and how are you engaging them to watch more or visit you more? I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty simple, but really thinking about them as fans and, and, and also knowing who the core fans are and creating whatever it is that's going to appeal to your core fans. That's awesome. Uh, great analogy for sure. Thanks for that. Uh, for those who don't know, don't know Chicken Salad Chick, uh, as uh, you and I were talking a little bit offline, uh, yeah, been to the office. Uh, you guys won an award with us about three or four years ago. My daughters have been to Auburn soccer camp uh, three times, so I've had the privilege of of going to uh, you know uh, the, the first restaurant, uh, a great uh, food, and we have a couple here in Cincinnati, as I mentioned. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the history of Chicken Salad Chick for those who may not know, and kind of all you guys do and all that you offer? Great. 
Um, you know, again, I think it, uh, it's wonderful trying to um, sort of developing a brand, but really I'm, what I'm doing is in my job is really just a conduit to, to help tell the story. Um, Chicken Style Chick as a brand really has, has a story. Um, as you mentioned, started in Auburn, Alabama um, by a, originally a, a single mom who started making chicken salad and selling it out of her home kitchen um, in Auburn. So really that mom business started real small got really popular uh, in Auburn, uh, college town, uh, well known, but not a big town, but people loved it so much. They, uh, they started referring to the, 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 the chick who was selling the chicken salad, became chicken salad chick. And she ultimately ended up starting a restaurant, uh, decided the business was growing too much, not to do in a home kitchen, led her to start a restaurant with um, a partner who became her husband. And so it really started as a, as a small family business um, from a mom. Um, which is, is, is a great beginning um, with a lot of heart in the community um, and some really amazing ideas on it. So started with one flavor of chicken salad. We now sell over a dozen varieties of chicken salad. A lot of people never thought you could actually have a dozen varieties of chicken salad. But as she started a restaurant, she knew that people like chicken salad plain. Some people like it with apples, grapes, and pecans. Some people might like it with a little bit of buffalo wing sauce to it. Um, so she created a menu um, that has um, a dozen of chicken salads to sort of uh, sort of appeal to a lot of different taste palettes. So we have some fruity and nutty, we have some spicy, um, we have the traditional style. Everybody has that kind that they make at home or that their grandmother made. Um, yeah. My grandmother made one that we call Olivia's Old South uh, that has uh, hard boiled eggs, pickles, um, like a sweet relish um, in it. And so really that became the palette. Um, um, on starting the business. And then we have um, a lot of fresh sides and um, things that go along with kind of a uh, focus on a lunch, uh, lunch experience. Um, started as a restaurant in Auburn and really took off from there. Probably the Auburn community supported it at the very beginning. Um, a lot of parents who had sent kids to Auburn University started to get to know it. Um, we started franchising. Uh, some of the early franchise owners were the ones who maybe had kids at Auburn uh, in Alabama in 2012. Um, in, and they ran it as a family business. Um, in 2015, um, they sold the company to a new ownership in private equity. Scott Davini, who's our CEO, uh, came in that helped put that deal together. Um, and that really was a time since then of, of, of significant growth. Um, and we're now, as you mentioned, we're in uh, 17 states, uh, 185 restaurants strong. Um, like all restaurants, this, this past year has been a crazy one. Um, but even in a COVID year, we, we were able to open 40 restaurants uh, this past year during COVID. So oh, wow. um, the great news is people love the brand, people love the food. And, um, you know, again, our core audience is we're a chick brand. So we're female first. Um, we often find that women uh, drive and drag the men to it, but we're, women really lead the brand. Uh, we're very involved in things in social media, very involved in our communities. And uh, if we can, you know, get to know and get to meet those, those moms or women in the community, um, they actually help drive the brand for us. So they're very important to us. And so again, a lot of that goes into the loyalty of how do we cultivate those people that we already know are brand champions? Yeah. And uh, what can we offer them that makes them feel even that much more connected with us over time that they're willing to tell a friend who will tell a friend who will tell a friend? Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, even when you go into your restrooms, the men's room, it uh, it's very female focused. You know, buy her flowers. You know what she does for you. Blah blah blah. Something. So it's uh, very uh, interesting to just the decor you have uh, in the restrooms as well. So uh, it's exciting. You know, being in a in a busy category in the restaurant space, we're a fast casual uh, part of the restaurant cate category. Yeah. Um, you know, you can get chicken salad many places. You can get it at a deli. You can get it at Publix. You can get it. You know, but there's never, we're, we're really in our own lane as a focus on chicken salad. Nobody's really entered the category. So, you know, being kind of a first to market is such a huge advantage um, if, you, if you do it right. Yep. And uh, again, we have that opportunity as we, as we move forward. You know, we're always introducing the concept. It's new. It surprises people when we go into new markets. They never thought that there could be a restaurant that was based solely on, on chicken salad. Um, often we'll remind them that, you know, whoever started the pizza category, um, you know, wow, okay, you're gonna have a restaurant where you got this crust and some cheese and some sauce, but ultimately it's the things you put on topping of the pizza that give it that variety of the menu. And that's a lot like what chicken salad does. You can create all kinds of different interesting uh, flavors 
Um, we have a core menu of over a dozen and, and it, we even have things that we do every season with introducing a new chicken salad. Excellent. Um, what is your favorite uh, 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 variety? So I'm, uh, number one, jalapeno holly. So okay. um, some pickled jalapenos in the chicken salad. I'm from uh, New Orleans originally. So that, that Southern Louisiana, I like the spicy. Okay. Uh, good. I, I like the cranberry kale. I'm kind of a uh, fruit guy, health guy. So I like the, at least the idea I'm getting some fruits and vegetables in it, uh, but it's good. <laughs> I, you know, I often steer folks, a lot of, a lot of folks, um, particularly women know the one we call Fancy Nancy, yeah. uh, which is the apples, grapes, and pecans, which is kind of a Waldorf style. When it's a new opening, our meeting guest, I usually will, I'll say, try the cranberry kelly because you get a cranberry and almond in every bite. Yeah, so, uh, I like that one. Um, um, it's, it's certainly um, a flavor that's, that's popular. Great. When you look at uh, your Craving Credits program, that's been a while around for a few years. Uh, you've definitely enhanced it. Can you kind of talk to us about uh, or, you know, how long it's been out, uh, what you guys do and how you do it and how you've enhanced the program? Sure. So the, you know, really started, you know, very early on. Um, so the brand started in 2008. Um, we started uh, growing a little bit and franchising in, in 2012. Uh, Craving Credits um, as our loyalty program as um, um, started in 2014. Um, Loyal Tree was the, the partner with us to develop a loyalty program. Um, and, you know, again, like a lot of things in, in loyalty back at that time, it, you know, we, we were kind of right at that cusp when people were moving from punch cards into, you know, um, a, um, an online driven or an app driven um, loyalty program. So we started early on, we were, uh, and began as a loyalty app. Um, and the, the, you know, the, the basis of it is, you know, it is Craving Credits, it's a, it's a rewards program. So we offer a dollar, um, a, sorry, a point for every dollar a guest spends and basically kicked off the program that way um, and encourage guests, you know, in every restaurant um, to, to join the program so they could actually go in and shop our reward store that would, you know, with enough points, you get a free cookie, a free koozie, you know, get up to a free meal um, and things like that. And with our core audience of, of, of women, you know, and a very simple idea of, you know, a point for every dollar adds up to things that you can shop for, that really has worked. Um, it's been that simple. And our guests love getting points and they love to shop for their rewards. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, kind of over time as we've grown, you know, on the, um, so the front facing part, you know, this many years um, after that, I mean, we're seven years in, 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 a, in a loyalty program that is now, you know, going to be going beyond from a guest facing standpoint, it's gotten better because the, the app platform is better. So um, there's more opportunities for us to communicate with the guests provide different awards, different incentives to them because there's more ability to have more messaging. But ultimately the, the experience is the same. That core guest is still loving what they have and what we offer, which is those points um, to shop the reward store. Um, on the back end for us, on the marketing side, you know, certainly being able to grow and we are now part of Session M, which is the platform that we're on. Um, and um, which was Loyal Tree was the platform was purchased by Session M. And we actually converted to the Session M um, platform and the new app, basically a um, new app version of it uh, a year last year. Um, but ultimately, the guest experience is the same. They can um, do what they want, but there's more opportunities for us in the app itself to communicate with them that we didn't have before. So that's what we're, it's more on our side that we're actually able to enhance it. And hopefully we help that it mean that it, 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 it enhances the experience for the guest because there's more things that they will see as specials for us and more reasons to actually interact with the app. Okay, great. When you look at uh, some of the challenges that marketers have today, I'm in your role, you're, you're looking at branding, you're looking at uh, placement of new uh, stores, potentially partnerships uh, you mentioned with high schools. You know, what are some of the, you know, what's the biggest challenge that you face with regard to uh, keeping your customer loyalty program uh, and, and kind of the customer loyalty focus top of mind? You know, I, I think we're, as a, as a brand, as we grow, um, we're, we're very focused on um, the, the guest experience. So we work with, um, and, and we, we monitor our guest experience in a, in a variety of different ways, obviously through the social media platforms and reviews. Um, we also have a, 
um, an ongoing guest satisfaction survey that's on the bottom of the receipts. Yeah. Now, and that taps you run, SMG program. runs that as well, correct? So SMG, so we use yeah. SMG for that. We've actually, we've been doing uh, social media ratings for a different company. We've merged everything into SMG just this, this month. Um, we've had a lot of success with the SMG program um, in helping us understand the satisfaction. And because it can drill down to the, all the way to a unit level, and you've got all those different measure, measures. So if you're, you'll know very easily to understand, is it, is it the friendliness to the guest? Is it speed of service? Was it accuracy of the order? All that stuff really matters. Um, now it ties into the app because, and we've had a lot of success with um, the response rate in SMG, which, um, so part of our program is, um, you know, we've, we've kind of migrated in the new platform where the guests can come in and they can scan their, um, their app at POS and that'll read them. But we've built the program based on guests scanning a re their receipt to load the points into the app. And so when they scan their receipt, um, they do that, they've had success. They're basically pushed the SMG survey to respond to it at that moment. So because they're interacting with the, the app, getting their points then, they've, they've hit success. So they have the confidence to go in and then fill out a survey about that experience they've had at the store. And that has given us extremely high um, response rate in something like a guest survey response. So again, that's been really, there was a period of time when we were in conversion of the app, interestingly, where we, we were not able to because we hadn't gone to the new the platform where um, we weren't pushing them to the SMG in the app. And right. we saw an immediate decline in response rate. Once we got the app switched over, it was you know like a two week, couple of week period. Um, then all of a sudden immediately the response rate came back. So again, we're using the app for that kind of push to basically one of our key tools to manage our business, which is the SMG program. That's awesome. Well, that, that kind of begs another question uh, to, uh, you know, obviously allow your franchisees to run the store, which is a, a big challenge in, in and of itself, you know, enabling them to have the insight from the loyalty program, from the voice of the customer program is very important. Uh, and it obviously can be very impactful. How do you manage the technology? Because technology is a huge challenge right now for marketers. Uh, lots of technology out there, different technology stacks, but integration uh, from SDKs to making sure that the, you know, the APIs and everything work. How do you manage that? You know, are there challenges in regard to making sure everything works together? Absolutely. Um, you know, I, th I think, you know, in the restaurant business, I've, I've learned that we're in the food business and, and more uh, we talk about people and technology more than we talk about food <laughs> in terms of running your business. Those are the two things that, are, that really ultimately are always on the list to, to figure out, to do better. Um, those, are, those are always at the top of the list when we have leadership meetings, you know, things like that. How are we doing with people? And ultimately, how are we doing the technology? Um, and, and is it working together? So I would say in the technology space, I think in, in any business, but in the restaurant business in particular, there's, there's so many um, balls in the air with technology. And ultimately a technology has to work for drill all, you know, all the way down to, and we see it, to a guest and our core, audi our core guest, really our, our sweet spot of our guest uh, target audience is a woman who's somewhere between 35 and 60. Um, and you get to the little bit older side of that and technology, you know, they're still following Facebook, which is wonderful. It's a great vehicle for us from a um, advertising and social media standpoint. But often they're not as technology savvy as the Gen, Gen Ys are. So, you know, you have, when you have technology, think about your guests who may not be tech, tech savvy, number one. Number two, the person they're interacting with in a moment of technology is a team member who is, you know, an owl employee, maybe in high school, who's got to solve some problems. So, you know, you have, that technology has to work all the way down to the people who are really interacting with it, who are not tech people. <laughs> They're not trained, all of those things. So that's really where it's the most difficult is, is can it be simple and easy and, sim and seamless so that that team member has a great experience in working in our restaurants and they want to come to work and to that guest who has a great experience that that team member can provide to them and our technology has so they want to come back. But all of those elements have to work together. Um, it's been a big year of technology for all restaurants in the, in, and, and particularly for us. We, we still have a lot of guests who dine in, but in a year of COVID, 
um, as all restaurants saw, either restaurants had to close or go to limited seating. Um, as dine-in sort of uh, went one way and we had to move off of that, we definitely had to reinvent our some of our technologies um, and get better with you know online ordering and delivery and moving into third party um, delivery and how do those function within our um, guest facing tech tech elements. So, you know, again, we, we were already, we already had online ordering connected through to Olo in our app. And that was a lot of moving into the Session M platform is we were, we were starting to outgrow the loyalty platform that we were on. And ultimately we're having a lot of um, challenges with the, the platform being able to do the, the volume we were doing. So the new platform is really set up to do a better job with online ordering. But again, all those moments where a guest is in an app, to order something and when the app's not working or there's a glitch, you know, you hear about it immediately and it can shut down that business for, you know, a period of time um, for ordering. So it, it can create chaos. So all of those things firing and talking to each other um, and, you know, in the fact that the technology is constantly changing. Yeah, and I think one of the things you mentioned too, uh, understanding that your sweet spot is 35 to 60, uh, and they can be you know, dichotomously different, uh, the people in those uh, kind of those age ranges. Uh, I mean, personalization, something you guys do very well, uh, the, you know, the, the different types of uh, cranberry salad that you have and, and kind of the offerings. How do you guys look at personalization and, and how do you optimize that, uh, you know, to, to be impactful? And is, is that something you guys are focusing more and more on? We are. I would say we're, we're not there yet. Um, so you go back to the menu. Yeah, and it, and it does come from people. So the, the fun part in a menu for those who haven't ever tried it. So there's this dozen flavors of chicken salad. This, this brilliance that was in Stacy's mind when she created this menu was every chicken salad has a personality um, and, a, and it's a namesake. So when we talk about Fancy Nancy, it's actually named after her aunt Nancy, who was the, you know, the most stylish one in her family. Um, and she created all these flavors and named them after people who helped her along the way and ultimately to honor them. So they will be always be remembered in some way on the menu. And that's something that we've continued um, as we move forward, even with new development of names. They may not be members of that immediate family um, members, but um, as we develop new names, we actually have a, a patty tyrific, a Thai flavor that we named after our, um, our head of training who has been with the brand for um, almost 10 years and really has been key to our brand getting it going um, and, and helping all these people along the way. We have one this summer that is going to be um, Pam's Parmesan Caesar, which is named after a, a wonderful general manager we had in, um, in the Atlanta market who was the best of our brand who passed away from cancer a year ago. Um, and so to honor her as she moves forward. So again, the personalization is in the flavors. So we want to have that connection. So again, small things that we've done to upgrade the app this year as we moved on the new platform, they're starting to recognize you personally. So even when you load onto your, your app, it says, you know, hello, Tom. So you know that they're there. If this, you know, now that the technology can pull, if they, if they show the app at POS, the team member can say, hi, Tom, great to see you again. Um, so those are the first stages, but behind that, we haven't started yet to access this because we're kind of only just a couple months in on the new platform, but to create more of that person personalization so that offers are going to be able to be directed to me or to that guest based on a certain behavior or a certain flavor they like the most. Um, that kind of thing is coming along the way on the app, and I think that'll be important to kind of create that further engagement with those uh, and, and, and greater loyalty over time. That's awesome. You, you mentioned it a little bit earlier. Customers are, are changing, uh, going through COVID 14 months in now. There's definitely change we've heard from, you know, our members, a lot of the restaurants, they've had to buy online, pick up in store, pick up curbside. You know, I remember the one on Anderson for when we opened back up in May or June, whenever that was last year, they had tents outside and they were selling things. And, uh, and I can tell you a story too. You can ask the manager. I hunted down, um, uh, wipes. Uh, she couldn't get any. And I was going, uh, I was doing a lot of housework at the time. And I, I think I like $80 worth of house wipes at, at, at Home Depot, like the big, massive kind. So I did that uh, in I think, May, June, sometime last year. So is that, yes, I definitely connected there as well. Um, so, um, yeah, so I don't know what, the, uh, what were we talking about. Um, customers well, change. How are customers changing? Yeah, no, I think one of the, you know, what, what, well, the, what you just expressed, even from your own experience, which again, I know you had sort of a connection to our, our brand already, but again, 
what we saw during COVID, uh, particularly on the shutdown time, we had some amazing, and again, this is where loyalty is important in building these fans who are really um, connected to you. Um, we created a program um, during uh, the COVID time um, that really came from our guests. So like you, you're like, went out and got wipes. A lot of folks were out there saying, we love chicken salad chicken. We know y'all are struggling. How can we help you? Or we know there's something going on. We'd love to help people in our, in our town. So our guests started asking us, hey, we'd love to give meals. We'd love to send meals to the hospitals or to first responders. Well, in kind of behind that, we ended up creating a something called Donate a Meal. So, and again, we pushed it through the app because the app took you to online ordering. And ultimately it was um, guests could go on who are asking us and they could donate a meal, go into the app and order um, a meal um, for anyone. And, um, and it, was, it was pretty simple. Go in, uh, donate a meal, order a, a $7.99 meal basically. Over the time that restaurant will collect all those orders they've had. And then at the end of the week, we put all those orders together. So if it was 500 meals that week, we would then take 500 meals to a restaurant on behalf of all those guests. And again, that to me is the power of, of loyalty. We, we told our guests in the app that we were doing this program. So, and pushed out push notifications um, and emails through the app. And they all, they were so excited because it started with the guests. And we, we basically were able to ultimately execute and operate something that they were looking for us to do. And, and give back to the community in, in, a, in a unique way. Another key thing for the app, which again was very much connected with the app as well as what we did on Facebook and social media, during that time when the restaurants were shut down, people were at home, they wanted our chicken salad. And so we leveraged that and the app as a way for people to go on the app to order in bulk. And so we would push out in the app and on Facebook, hey, we're coming to you know, whatever, whatever area of, of Anderson it might be, we're coming to the, you know, White Elms neighborhood on, um, on Tuesday, and we're going to deliver to you. And they, and the guests would go in and fill out their orders for us. And we would show up and deliver it to neighborhood, but neighborhood by neighborhood. And that was a huge benefit to us during the time the restaurants were doing lower sales, everything was shut down. We went actually out into the market and we actually went out farther than even our trading areas of our restaurants. And that's how we actually even developed and seeded some new markets that we've now opened in this year. That's awesome. Okay, great. Uh, great focus there and, and, and great commitment, especially on if you talk to, If you talk to your guests regularly, they will do the work for you because they want you and because they know you care about them and it's, it's full circle. So again, the, work, the, the loyalty program to me is, is kind of everything because the restaurants that we also know have the highest number of Craven Credits members and that are the most involved in their communities were the restaurants in our business that had the most success during the, the challenges of COVID. That's right. So that really speaks to partnerships and partnerships are, are more and more important for marketers say, especially for a customer loyalty program. And very similar to what you do with acting in the community, working with high schools and whatever, but also from a brand to brand perspective, maybe a partnership with uh, Sephora potentially. There's a lot of interest in that. I mean, how are you guys looking at partnerships, approaching partnerships? Is it from kind of the community and the, the corporate social responsibility perspective or you know, what else uh, do you think is important or is your focus with, regarding partnerships? I think, you know, we, 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 we have probably our business, you know, we're still growing. So we're hundred, we're 185, 17 states strong. Um, you know, what matters the most in us is we're still very focused on that local market and we develop, we push out from the store out. So a lot of our partnerships really are on a local basis. Um, and it's those, those local high schools, it's the spirit nights, things like that, that we're very focused on. It's the, the nurses and the hospitals that we're, we're focused on. Um, we do have a, um, a connection. And again, it's, it's, it's sort of part of our story that I, I didn't talk about. Stacy and her husband, Kevin, when they founded the restaurant as a family, um, Kevin actually also passed away from cancer in 2015, part of the change in the business to be sold. And so we have a chicken salad chick foundation that supports uh, cancer research, as well as food banks and feeding the hungry. So a lot of our efforts in marketing and partnership um, go back and try to really support that initiative. Um, and a lot of it's really on a local basis, um, which is where we're, we're, uh, we're getting our core business. That doesn't mean that we don't have some areas that we look more nationally. We're, we're growing. So I think we don't haven't yet had any of those larger brand partnerships. 
Um, we do have, we have a partnership obviously in the restaurant with Coca-Cola, the Coca-Cola company. Um, so we, we do, we, we activate a lot of things with that partnership with Coke. Um, we're excited because we've done quite a few things. SEC football is big for us. We started in Auburn. We've got stores in, you know, every SEC main, uh, just about every SEC town, uh, college, university town. Um, so that, that's been a big push for us. We've moved into the ACC now. Um, we've moved beyond that. I, I guess we're, we're going, we're going Midwest now. So excited about the, those connections, uh, for us. So we do have partnerships through sports, um, as well. Um, but like the Coke partnership has been great for us. We're even going to be working on some, uh, things for the summer's Olympics. So excited, excited about that. Awesome. And a lot of that really is for a way for us to get a little bit more of that broader brand awareness as we continue to grow. Okay. Great. Um, well, one last questions I have for you. When you look at KPIs metrics, what, what kind of KPIs do you look at? Because you obviously are taking in tons of data on, on different facets of your program, your customers, marketing to them in a very personalized, unique way. What are some of the metrics that are important for, for you from a you know customer experience, customer loyalty perspective? So um, I'll start with the most basic KPIs for us, which is, is our comp sales uh, and comp transactions. So, you know, again, we look at that on a daily basis, weekly basis. Uh, and monitor that. Um, second piece is when, again, a little bit farther out from the specifics of the question, uh, talked about SMG. We're managing the KPIs related to uh, get satisfaction through that um, on a weekly basis as well, and, and monitoring every store for their overall satisfaction um, and intent to recommend. Um, we score really, really high um, in the fast casual. Um, we're, we're probably one, the, the one top one or two usually in, in most areas of that. So keeping that going is important to us. Um, other things we look at in, as it relates to the loyalty program, I didn't talk about, again, um, we still participate and do double points days on a regular basis um, and give those double points for every dollar you spend on those days. Um, we, we monitor that um, because we see um, not only do the day that we have a double points day have big sales, but we actually see the tail um, of that over the next few days in terms of um, the transactions and the a little bit higher frequency of the when the people return. Um, so those that's another key thing we're looking at every month to see how we did um, on every double points day. Um, you know, on an ongoing basis with the loyalty program, um, we're, we're growing it every month. So we have some targets that we try to look at on a per restaurant basis with signups um, for, for every month. Um, and then again, we use the loyalty program. Again, another way we use it is for in, you know, kind of gauging our grand openings. Um, every grand opening, we leverage the loyalty program um, and the Craving Credits app. Um, we give away free chicken salad to the first 100 guests who open, uh, who walk in our doors. And as I, we opened 40 restaurants last year, we'll open 40 to 50 this year. Um, and so every restaurant opening has a hundred guests get the free chicken salad, but to get the free chicken salad, you actually, we, we deliver it through the app. So you have to join the app. Um, and then every month when you're gonna get your free chicken salad, it's really, a, it's free chicken salad every month for the year. Um, you're gonna redeem that through our app. And so again, that, that's a way of kicking off for any new restaurant and an immediate group of people who are in the app that then we can kind of grow off of. Um, awesome. And so how many people did we get to sign up? And ultimately we'll know based on, on that day of and the traction behind the, the first 100, kind of give us some ideas of how that restaurant's gonna, gonna, gonna perform over time. So again, there's, a, there's probably a lot of, a lot of things there. And there's, there's way more data that we haven't yet leveraged. That's awesome. <laughs> Well, I think the last question I have for you, uh, I mean, what can Loyalty 360 do to help you with, with you and your journey, help your team focus on customer loyalty and experience? You know, I think one, you know, the area that we're developing um, and it's with Session M with our platform as we're, as, as we're getting more sophisticated in what we can access, um, you know, ultimately it's, it's we, we haven't yet gotten to that point where we're, we're, we're doing real targeted email campaigns and targeted offers. So really part of it is, I know we, we all, again, in addition to people technology, data is another key word that's always on the top of the agenda um, in a leadership meeting. And there's data everywhere, but you know, trying to figure out how to harness the data that, that is in a program and to take insights that you can use in an actionable way is, is something that I think we, we probably don't spend enough time and, and probably could have some 
um, help with some outsiders saying, here's the kind of things that you can pull from this that might be able to show you the way. Excellent, makes sense. Well, Tom, uh, it was great speaking with you. Uh, great hearing your passion. Uh, it was uh, uh, very fun for me to learn a little more about chicken salad chick, yes, some of the heritage, and I forgot a couple pieces, but uh, you guys are doing some amazing work, so keep it up and look forward to talking to you guys again soon. Thanks so much, Mark. Thanks Absolutely. for reaching out, I appreciate it. Absolutely.